unforgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned, and I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven.
Good morning, River of Life Church. How's everybody doing today? We're so glad you come into the house of God. We're so glad you're wanting to spend Sunday with us. We're, we're so happy that you're here with us. Before we get started, I've got a, an announcement to make to you. Um, you know, we've been dealing with uh, the fire and the, the youth sanctuary and everything across the, the street over here for a long time. We've been working really hard, but I've got some very, very good news. Next Saturday, we will be having an open house in our youth sanctuary. We will be having an opportunity for everyone to come and visit and to view the facility of what we've been working on. And we will have a very big celebration of our first youth event in five months. Praise God. Praise God. You know, we've got a few things planned for that day. We're going to have some food for all the kids that will be attending. Uh, we've got some things in store that they're really going to like, but we're going to have a youth movie night on Saturday. And I, I hope that you will invite some kids to come and that they will be able to attend. It'll be Saturday at 4 o'clock, okay? We're going to start at 4. We're going to try to get all the kids out by around 8, okay? We're going to probably start the movie around 6 uh, so that we can get kids back home for... Uh, for church the next day obviously so we've got uh, something special for the older teenagers and we've got something for the younger kids that will be in this youth sanctuary over here the big sanctuary and I, I would rather the people who come to the youth to be at least 15 years of age okay or at least eighth or ninth grade we have something very to the movie yes obviously um, it's got some very serious topics in it that are for a little older age group, but we will have something for both ages, the younger kids and the older teenagers as well. So we hope that you'll be able to attend and to enjoy this wonderful event with us. Okay? Uh, before we get started today, I have a, a scripture I want to share with you. Uh, Sister Deborah was teaching this morning, and she was, uh, well, she used about 20 scriptures actually, but there was one that really spoke to me because of uh, what I was going to say to you myself and uh, it was in the book of Romans I believe and it says to offer your body as a living sacrifice all right now that's very powerful but the word that comes after that is what really means something to me is it says as a reasonable service now what does that mean that means that's something that should be easy for you to do based on what he has done for us and that's very very powerful to me especially because it says eternity in that scripture and I want to speak to you from the book of Isaiah this morning, Isaiah 57. This is verse 15. It says, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth all of eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. With him also, though, is of a contrite and low spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the spirit of the contrite. So God may be in this high and lofty place, but don't forget that he is there with you in the pit as well. He is there with you, and he will revive you. God bless you today. Good morning. Good morning, River of Life family. Um, today, I, we are going to honor somebody very special. This week, our pastor's wife is going to be having a birthday, and she hates more than anything to come up here. So, Miss Carol, please come up here, even though I know you hate this. <laughs> yes. All the way, sorry. <laughs> I want to read something real quick. A pastor's wife, she's a godly woman. She has such grace. Always warm, greeting, and with a beautiful smile on her face. She's always encouraging. She knows her place. She is the pastor's wife. She always, ha she always has to look right, always on time, though her schedule is always really tight. Um, she's a lady. She's everyone's friend. She serves with love deep within. All the... Uh, writs she tries to mend she is the pastor's wife she carries her burden she prays for you sometimes she cries the whole night through you don't know when she's feeling blue 
because she's the pastor's wife. At church, she starts to walk up the aisles, so many need to stop and talk for a while. Though she's tired and she's often trialed, she's patient because she's the pastor's wife. In her life and in her time and in her own, uh, there's always a need. They go on and on with a knock on the door, a ring of the phone. That's the life of a pastor's wife. Her husband, her husband she shares with a whole congregation. She humbly accepts, accepts this intense dedication. In loneliness, she kneels to seek consultation. God bless this beautiful pastor's wife. She still, she will someday reach the end of her race, and she'll meet her master face to face. Surely to God, have, surely God has a special place in heaven for such a beautiful pastor's wife. This is a gift from the council and the church, and we just want to say um, happy birthday. Um, hope it's a beautiful one, and I just want to say thank you. And I know the, everybody here is very blessed and honored to have you as our pastor's wife. I love you.
I was reading this morning about Brother John and Brother Peter. <laughs> I love it when they said, get up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Whatever it is this morning that you're going through, all you got to do is move. Hallelujah. And get up in Jesus' name. Get up, get up. Get up in Jesus' name. The Lord is calling daily for those who would be saved. and worship there's no other way our weapon is powerful through praise and worship and I, I didn't put this song up there this morning pastor but I just feel like singing that this morning all I want to do is love you all I want to do is worship all I want to do is stay here right at your feet as I lift my hands to heaven, breathe the fire down on me, rekindle the fire within me, Lord, once again. All I want to do is love you, all I want to do is worship, all I want to do is lay you right at your feet. As I lift my hands to heaven, let your fire fall down on me, rekindle the fire within me, Lord, once again. All I want to do is love you, all I want to do is worship, all I want to do is lay here right at your feet. As I lift my hands to heaven, let your fire fall down on me, rekindle the fire within me, Lord, once again. I love you, Lord, and I
up your holy name it's our desire amen it's what we need to do it's what we must do can we put up the song I, I never know I call it the Psalms 23 song what, what's the title sis it is called Psalms 23 well that's why I call it that amen can we can we put that up I just don't think we're done worshiping yet this morning. Amen. I think sometimes you just, you got to break through the tiredness a little bit. If you've had a week like we've had, if you've been in revival all week, and you fed the evangelists after church every night, amen. Stayed up till 11 o'clock fellowshipping. Then went to bed and thought about all the funny stories Brother Dean told around the dinner table. And you don't go to sleep. And then yesterday we had a celebration of life for Brother Johnny Blunt. And I want to tell you something. I could have very easily yesterday just cut loose preaching in that, in that celebration of life. The Spirit of God moves so evidently in this, in this room. But can I tell you this morning, we need to be reminded sometimes that he's just your shepherd. And he so tenderly and lovingly cares for his sheep. Amen. The rod is more to ward off the wolves when they come. But that, that staff is there to just kind of gently pull us back in. Amen. He'll lead you this morning. Let's sing this together. And let's not worry about our neighbor. Can we not worry about our neighbor? Can we just worship him today and not worry who's on our right or our left? Just sing to your heavenly father today. Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. He goes before me. He still does, church. No fear today, Lord. I'm filled with an Yes, we are. My cup's overflowing. No weapon can harm me. I Thank you, church. Joy. 
Father, we thank you so much. God, for our time of worship, Lord, we pray over our tithe and our offering this morning. Lord, as the ushers be coming in just a moment to pass by, may we not look at it as though we're giving money to the kingdom, but that we're giving obedience to your word. May we not look at it as a hardship. (laughs) May we look at it as a joy. That we get to be obedient to what the Word has commanded in our life. Thank you for being my shepherd, Father. Thank you for leading me and guiding me and feeding me and protecting me. Bless the offering today, Lord. Bless the tithe in Jesus' name. Go ahead, guys. While they're taking this morning's tithe and offering, uh, may we have something, and I know you said, Pastor, man, we just got out of revival, but we've had something exciting uh, present itself that is going to happen on Wednesday night. On Wednesday night, it happens if you turn your clicker on so you can turn the slide. But on on Wednesday night, we are going to have the Relentless Tour here at our church. The Relentless Tour. It is their very first stop on their tour. It is 11th hour, which we've had 11th hour here before with Miss Amber Epinette. But they have added two new members uh, to 11th hour Uh, God moved uh, some of the other ones in different directions. Uh, But then the Griffith family is going to be with 11th Hour also. Uh, And they are teaming up together to come. And So we're just going to have church on Wednesday night. Amen. I just say you show up, go to your favorite restaurant beforehand. Amen. Some of you will make your way to Zapata's, I know. Some of you will make your way to Wendy's. We know you'll get there. And And you'll get your favorite meal, but show up at 7 o'clock ready to have a Holy Ghost time in the Lord. Amen. Call some friends and neighbors. My goodness, call somebody you don't even like and invite them to church. Amen. Call them and get them here and and, uh, just come expecting a mighty move of God. I have never had the opportunity of being with the Griffith family uh, they came highly recommended from Miss Amber Epinette, whom Carolyn and I have known, man, for a long time now. I'm not even sure how long we've known her. It's been a long time. And so we, we get to be the very first stop on this relentless tour. So let's do our best to get here and be a part of that and just see God move in a miraculous way. I, I mean, this is an opportunity, especially on a Wednesday night to invite people to church who normally wouldn't go to church. You can tell them, hey, the preacher's not going to be preaching. It's just singing. 
Uh, that'll get them there. And then if the Holy Spirit shows up and the preacher preaches, well, you didn't lie to anybody. Amen. And so you just, you come, you come expecting uh, just a mighty move of God this Wednesday night. Amen. You come and, and believe for God uh, to do something miraculous, to do something real. I'm telling you, I've seen people get saved at singing. Uh, the drug lord of South Washington County that I've told you about, uh, Brother Leo Palmer, got saved on a Sunday morning because it was just a singing that was happening on the Sunday morning, and the Holy Spirit showed up and did business with him. Amen? Amen. We're going to talk about something today. This is going to be a unique sermon. Usually I'm the point guy. I've got points, and I do have points today, but... God didn't give me a key text. Usually everything I develop develops off of a key text, but God gave me a key thought, and he would not let me get away from it. It was the thought about fire in Scripture. We're going to look at four key texts where God sent fire in the Word of God. Four key texts. We're going to start with the very first time we ever see the word fire. And we're going to deal with each one of those and what God has used them for. And you're going to realize, do you realize, all of us have to go through the fire. And not every time is the fire is always for our good. But it's not always easy to go through that fire. And as God spoke to me, for the last two years, would you agree, we feel like we've been in a fire. We feel like we've been in a struggle. We feel like we've been facing a few things and going through some things. But you've got to realize that every time God sent His fire, it had a purpose. It had a reason. I've been dealing with fire my whole life growing up because I grew up country. And in the country, we didn't have somebody come get our trash. We had a trash barrel. Come on, somebody. And you threw the trash in the barrel, and then you burnt the trash that was in the barrel. And then when the barrel filled up, you took it to the trash dump, which is a holler behind somebody's house. Amen. But then we heated our house with fire. We had to get the kindling ready, had to do everything right. This was before fire starter logs. Amen. And when you were in charge of getting the fire going before mom and dad got home uh, from work and you would forget, Aquanet hairspray would start a fire pretty good. And then mom would wonder, why in the world do I not have any hairspray left? You had to get the fire going. Amen. But God deals with fire in our life. And I want to show you this today. So I'm going to pray, and then we're going to get right to preaching. Father, you know I'm out of my normal. And Father, you know I love how everything structures in the sermon. And so today you're making me step out of my box. And to just preach what you have laid on my heart to preach. Lord, more than I want to be seen as a great orator, I want to be seen as an obedient son. And so, Father, as I obey you today, I pray, Lord, that you would move miraculously in the heart of your children. And that you would speak to them in a wonderful way. And when they leave here today, they won't talk about a good sermon and they won't talk about a good preacher, but they'll talk about a great heavenly Father. And we love you. Save the lost. Heal the sick, Lord. Encourage those who are, who are facing depression and discouragement. Move miraculously in your service. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Do me a favor. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, this fire's for you. The very first time we see fire in Scripture, we find it in Genesis chapter 19 and verse 24. And the Bible says, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom 
and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. It's the very first time we see fire in Scripture. This fire is an admonishing fire. The word admonishing means to counsel against wrong practices, to caution, or to advise. Would you agree with me that God came and He tried to speak to the people of Sodom and Gomorrah on multiple occasions, and finally they would not listen, so God sent fire down to reprove them of their sin. Do you understand? Sometimes the fire that we have to go through in our life is God has spoken and God has spoken and God has spoken and we haven't listened to the word of God we haven't listened to the admonishing of God and so fire comes to reprove us of our sin not every fire you go through is because Satan came and spoke to you not every fire you go through is because a demon is there but sometimes God will allow fire in our life to reprove us of our sins do you realize today God is going to do whatever he can do in your life to purge you of the sin that is stopping the flow of God listen we all deal with sin the person this morning that says they don't deal with sin has a lying problem we all deal with sin. There is a nature inside of us that is constantly at war with the Holy Ghost that resides on the inside of us. And so sometimes God can speak and will listen. Sometimes He'll send our, sp our, 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 our spouse to come by and say, Hey, I think there's something going on. And we still won't listen. And then we get a scripture and the Word speaks to us and we still won't listen. So God says, I'm going to have to send a fire. I'm going to have to send something that's going to challenge you, that's going to speak to you. And he sent it to Sodom and Gomorrah to reprove them of their sin. He sent them to counsel them against their wrong practices. Listen to me. Your wrong thoughts become wrong practices. If you don't deal with the thought, you're going to deal with an action. We have thoughts that come against. That's why God said we've got to cast down every imagination and every thought that elevates itself above God. Why? Because what does sin do? Sin says God is wrong and flesh is right. That's what sin does. Sin, our flesh loves sin. This body that you have loves sin. Listen, we were good sinners. We were. We enjoyed sin. That's why we kept doing it. That's why we still battle it. Because it appeases our flesh. But then God will send a trial of fire into our life. Fire has always been representational of purifying. Always. God did not send a fire to destroy the people of Sodom and Gomorrah, even though it did because they would not repent of their sin. But he sent it to be an example that this is what happens in sin. So those who saw it could reprove their life and walk in the righteousness that God has called them to. Isn't it amazing? This is the very first place we see the word fire. It's him sending judgment. It's him saying, I'm tired of your lifestyle. I'm cautioning you. I'm advising you that if you stay the course, what's going to happen? Fire's coming. Now, we know the story. Lot's leaving, isn't he? He's leaving. He's getting out of town. And what did God tell him? Don't what? Don't look back. Because if you look back, what's going to happen you're going to turn into a pillar of salt. Would you agree? Is that the word of God? And even though fire is falling, even though sin is being judged, even though sin is being reproved, that flesh was so strong in the, in the desire of Lot's wife that she turns around with a longing of such a wrong situation. My goodness, would you look at the world today? If God is ever trying to get our attention that He's coming and the sky's getting ready to split and the shout's getting ready to happen and the trumpets get ready to blow it's today he's trying us 
And it's time to turn to the Word. And it's time to turn to the Gospel. And it's time to turn to the things of God. It's time to get on our knees and pray for our lost loved ones. Listen, we're preaching all over the airwaves. Jesus is coming. Would you agree? You can't listen to a preacher that he's not saying Jesus is coming. Then can I ask a question? Where are our outreaches? Why aren't we going after the lost? I'm, I'm going to talk about preachers for a moment. We got too many preachers writing books instead of winning souls. We got too many preachers wanting to be on the bestsellers list. Instead of going into the highways and byways and into the hedges and compelling them to come in, that they might be saved. If the church gets concerned that Jesus really is returning, then it's going to leave the church and it's going to witness to its waiter. It's going to witness to its waitress. It's going to witness to the girl that's checking them out at Walmart. It's going to witness to their doctors. It's going to witness to their co-workers. Because if Jesus is coming, then we've got to get a desire to see the law saved it's got to change us God sent a fire to admonish them he, he sent a fire <laughs> that would say your sin has got to stop I've always wanted to build an altar that on the top of the altar was inscribed sin stops here because when you get at an altar, whether it's a wooden altar made by man or you kneel at a rock in the woods or you kneel beside your, your bed or you kneel at your couch, that's where the altar is, wherever man kneels and does business with God. That's where sin ought to stop. We don't pray because we love our sin. We don't read because we love our sin. We don't witness because we love our sin. It's time to lay it down. We look around and Gog and Magog are starting to form in the world and we're starting to see revelation open up before our eyes. We've got to be a light. In a world that has become so dark, we've got to be a light. It used to be that Andy and Aunt B ruled our airwaves and Ward and June Cleaver ruled our airways and families had a mom and, and a dad and they, they stuck together and the kids were raised in a wholesome life and now we, we live in a society where two women are trying to be mom and dad and, and two men are trying to be mom and dad and you listen to me it may not be popular it may be hate speech to some but God did not create Adam and Adam or Eve and Eve He created Adam and He created Eve He he created a male and he created a female. And he did it for a purpose. It may not be popular preaching, but it's still Bible doctrine. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 13, There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able. But He will, with the temptation, also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Look at what He says. Everything you face is common. Did you hear it? It's common. So quit letting the devil think you're the only one that's going through it. It's common. It's common to man. We're all going to face temptation. And I love, you see my favorite word? Do you see my favorite word? But. Oh, hold on. When God says but, He's turning the script. But God is faithful. Yes, the Satan is showing up on the scene to give you some temptation. But while Satan is showing up on the scene, God got their way ahead of him. And while Satan is tempting you, God is standing there on the ready. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above what you are able. And by the way, he's going to make a way out. Oh, glory. He's going to make a way out. Now, I, I know y'all y'all don't fight because you're saved. You just have intense time of fellowship. But Sister Carol and I, because of this, this old redneck that's still in me every once in a while, will have us a good fight. Do you know sometimes the phone will ring in the middle of that fight? 
Do you know that sometimes the kids will yell for mom or dad in the middle of that fight? Why do you think that is? God's trying to make a way of escape. Because you've got tied up into something that's all about flesh and nothing about spirit. And God will put a distraction in the middle of it to give you a way of escape. That's the God you serve. That's the God I serve. That He'll make a way where there is no way. God, how am I going to get out of this? I'm faithful. He's faithful. He goes ahead of you. The ram didn't get caught in the thicket at the same time he got up there on the mountain. No, the ram was there when he got there. He just couldn't see it till it was time for God to reveal it. You better hold on. If I'm talking to somebody this morning that is caught up in the middle of something, that you're square in the middle of a sin. Oh, don't get me wrong. You look pretty this morning. You got it all put together. You combed your hair. You brushed your teeth. You put a smile on your face. You walked into the house of God. God, but the preacher's preaching and that sin that's in you that you're battling, that you're dealing with you're getting nauseated at your tummy, your head's a little bit swimming and you say man something's going wrong with me, it's called conviction and God brought you by this morning, not because he hated you, not because he's wanting to condemn you, because he is making a way of escape, he brought you into a house that was going to preach right where you're living, but God has made a way of escape, it's it's called Calvary. It's called the cross. It's called the empty tomb. It's called the blood-stained banner of glory. He's made a way out. Glory! They had multiple opportunity at Sodom and Gomorrah. There's always been a verse, Brother Brandon, that has bothered me. And it talk about that the world would get so wicked in the last days that even Sodom and Gomorrah could judge it. That's a sobering verse. It's time to wake up and deal with our sin. Let me say that again. It's time to wake up and deal with our... Because what do we love to do with sin? Come on. I saw what you did. I saw your Facebook post. I know where you were at. We love this. My mama said, Brian, when you point that finger, look at, your, look at your hand. You got three coming right back at you. So I learned how to point like that. <laughs> Why? Because we're going to find a way to blame it on somebody else. Amen. Adam started it. Come on, guys. Adam started it. Ladies, you ought to shout amen right there. Adam started it. That woman you gave me, can I have my rib back? He started the blame game, and we've been perfect at it ever since. Let's look at the next fire this morning. Look at the next fire. Exodus 3 and 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed well brother brian if the first fire wasn't an admonishing fire what is this fire it's an approving fire it's a, let me say that again it's an approving fire the word approve means to prove to show to be true to justify moses <laughs> He's on the back side of a desert, isn't he, guys? What's he doing? He's with some of your kinfolk, Jethro. Amen. He's with Jethro. And he's on the back side of the desert. And he's, he's become a shepherd. Man, I thought you were going to get on it this morning, Sister Deborah. He left the comfort of Pharaoh's palace. And he's on the back side of a desert. Why is he there, Sister Carol? He's there because he killed an Egyptian and he buried him in the sand. And at 80 years of age, he flees to go the backside, excuse me, 40 years of age, he flees to go the backside of the desert. At this time, he's now 80 years old when God finds him. He's been on the backside of that desert for 40 years because Moses' life is bro broken up into three 40-year segments. 
And so he's on the backside of the desert thinking that he was called to be this great thing, called to deliver people, called all the, but he messed up. Oh, can I talk to some folks who think they messed up this morning? Can I talk to some people who think, well, I forgot to pray last Tuesday, so God has written me off. I didn't, God, pastor's preaching about witnessing. I forgot to witness this week, so God's not approving. He's on the backside of a desert. He looks up, and that old acacia bush is burning. It was a normal sight. Why? Because in the hot summer, they would burst because of their dryness and would catch on fire, but they would just burn up like that. But this bush caught his attention. Why? Because it was on fire, but it was not being consumed, even though it was engulfed. All the limbs were still there. All the leaves were still still there. God was getting ready to do something. He looks over and God says, Moses, Moses. <laughs> oh, somebody ought to preach when God calls your name twice. Amen. But brother, I got to say something to you this morning. We talked about your white hair, hair last week. He don't have any white hair this week. What in the world? My goodness. You must be taking vitamins. Amen. They're working. <laughs> Those vitamins are working. I had a pastor who was gray-headed one Sunday, came back in the next day. He had dark hair. We said, what'd you do? And Brother Rudell, Brother Rudell, he said, oh, I took some vitamins. The stuff had vitamin E oil in it, so <laughs> come on, somebody. Anyway, he's on the backside of a desert. God shows up in the burning bush. Why? Because he still approved of it. He still believed in him. He still was a deliverer. Do you understand? Sometimes your fire is about sin, but sometimes your fire is God trying to remind you that he's not done with you yet, that you can still go through some things and come out on the other side victorious. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but somebody's getting joy on the inside of them this morning. Somebody's being reminded of what God can do in your life. Go ahead, shout, I'll wait. Woo! As for one of y'all that wanted to do it, but just were too dignified. Hallelujah. He approves. The fire is not there to remind him of the murder. The fire is there to remind him of what's inside of him. That what was in him when his mama put him in that little basket, put him on that river so Pharaoh's daughter could raise him only to hire the mama to be the nanny. Come on, God had a plan. God had a plan. And Moses for 40 years has been leading sheep around that desert. For 40 years he's been wandering Man, I thought I was a deliverer. I thought God was going to use me. My mama would whisper in my ear as she's raising me in the house of Pharaoh who I was and who I belonged to. And now I'm herding sheep. And now I'm dealing with manure. And now I'm dealing with these animals all the time. I sat in my house and thought about what could have been. But then God sends a fire. And then God sends a fire to say, No, son, I'm not done with you yet. I'm sending a fire to say I approve of you and who you are and what you do and what you're called to do I approve I'm here to show you that you're true I'm here to show you that you're justified I'm here to show you that you can do it listen I'm studying this I, I don't know if you can tell but I'm having fun this morning because God turned my mindset about what happened across the way God said, you've looked at it as a fire of destruction instead of a fire of promotion. <laughs> you've looked at it as though I, I stopped. I haven't stopped anything. I just, had to, I just had to delay it a little while so I could prepare some other things. And when I get done with it, then we're going to open. Do you understand? This coming Saturday is the first day of God getting ready to release His glory. This coming Saturday, God is going to reopen something that for five months hasn't been moving. We've been praying for five months. We've been believing for five months. So at 3 o'clock, you get to come walk through it. You get to look at it, but you've got to leave by 4. 
Because at 4 o'clock, the kids are going to enter into there. And God's going to do some wonderful things. And He's going to feed not only their bellies, but He's going to feed their soul. It's going to be amazing what God does. And, and for five months, this couple, this young man, this young lady has waited patiently. They've not griped. They've not complained. They've just sat back and they've waited. Do you not think God has seen their honor and God has seen their humility and He's getting ready to pour out over their lives a wonderful special anointing over the top of them and God is going to do greater things in H2O than he's ever done in the history of the river and it's not because of Brian and it's not because of Israel it's because of his fire it's because of what he's doing he's pouring out his spirit God is saying I approve glory I forgot what verse I even got next. Acts 4.13 And now when they saw the boldness Oh, I love this. And now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned, they were ignorant men. I don't know about you, but that's not a compliment. Amen? They looked at them and they said, These guys, they, they, they have no education. They're ignorant. But they marveled. But they marveled. They took knowledge of them. What? You better get this last part. That they had been with Jesus. <laughs> well, wait a minute. We know them. We know they're unlearned. We know they're ignorant. But look at them. Look what's going on with them. Look at the power they operate in. We can tell that they've been with Jesus. I'm going to tell you a story on Brother Dean Caldwell. Brother Dean tricked his mama into signing a piece of paper so he could be in remedial classes in school. He brought home a report card that was straight A's. Mama saw the principal in town and said, I'm so proud of my boy. He's got straight A's. He said, Sister Caldwell, I just got one question. She said, what's that? He said, Dean is so intelligent. Why did you sign him up for all remedial classes in school? She said, you wait till I get a hold of Dean Caldwell. Listen to me. This world will make you feel like you're unlearned. This world will make you feel like you're ignorant. But all they need to see is wait They've been with Jesus. <laughs> Look at them. They've been with Jesus. When you can smile through the pain, you've been with Jesus. <laughs> when you can smile through the sickness, you've been with Jesus. When you can smile through the hell that's been going on in this world, they can say you've been with Jesus. When you lose everything and you can still sing the glories of God, they can say you've been with Jesus. <laughs> when you don't know where your next meal's coming from, but you show up at church... <laughs> They can say you've been with Jesus when everything bad can happen to you. Stomach issues, esophagus issues, heart issues, back issues, blood issues, issues upon issues that need tissues. And you're still here Sunday morning, Sunday night. Wednesday night, you're still raising your hands in worship. You're still smiling through it all. That's because they've been with Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. They're unlearned. They're ignorant. But they marvel me. They lay hands on the sick. And they recover. People make fun of their gospel. And they still preach it. People make fun of who they are, but they still get together and fellowship. They're not afraid to be seen with one another. Glory to God. The third fire that we see is in Exodus 13 and 21. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud and led them the way, to lead them the way. And by night, a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day 
and night. What is this, Brother Brian? It's an advancing fire. Let me say that again. It's an advancing fire. It's a fire that moves forward. It's a fire that precedes you. It's a fire that promotes you. I told you God was speaking to me. He said, Brian, what you had across the way was 1970s. What you're fixing to get is 2000s. You say, well, Brother Brian, I like my 1970s truck. Yeah, but when it gets 100 degrees outside, all you've got is two wind wings. And you leave it at home and you get it the 2000 model that's got, come on, say it with me, air conditioned. It's better. Do you understand? God is taking them from 400 years of bondage. 400 years of servitude. 400 years to a land that flows with milk and honey. God is an advancing fire. Not every fire we go through is about sin. And not every fire we go through is about promotion. But sometimes that fire is to lead us and get us in a direction that we can go. And it's a fire that is going to move us forward. It's a fire that goes before us. It's a fire that promotes us to a greater place that you know the ten, the twelve spies went in. Ten were bad and two were good. Y'all didn't grow up singing that? Twelve spies went out to spy on Canaan. Ten were bad and two were good. Y'all didn't go to vacation Bible school. Jesus touched them. But the two said, hey, you ought to see the grapes. They're huge. They're big. You ought to see the giants. We serve a God that knows how to defeat giants, right? Ten came back and said, we can't do it. Two came back and said, we can do it with the Lord. We can do it with the Lord. See, sometimes we get intimidated by where God's moving us to. Sometimes we get intimidated about a building program. Sometimes we get intimidated about what, what God's trying to move us to. That we would not have gone on our own. Why? Because we like comfort. How many of you have a recliner in your home? Oh, I heard a yes, sir. Okay, okay, let, let, me, let me check this real quick. How many of you own a lazy boy recliner in your home? Oh, there it is. Why? Because they're more comfortable. Amen. We've had the other. They didn't last, did they, baby? The one we have right now we bought in 2014. It's still going strong. It's a leather lazy boy. Why do you have a lazy boy? Because I like being lazy in it. It's comfortable. The, 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 the other night, I, I was real tired, and I was in the lazy boy. And, and Sister Elisa, I don't know if yours does this, but every once in a while, mine will hug me. And won't let me go. Yeah, and I, I told Sister Carol, I said, Sister Carol, I, I know I got two legs. I know what you're fixing to tell me. But this recliner won't let me go. Will you please make me a cup of coffee? And can I tell you, we get that way in church. We get comfortable with our songs. We do. We get comfortable with our style. We get comfortable with our timetable. Amen? Amen? I mean, we had people have a conniption one time because we took worship time from 11 a.m. to 10 a.m. They couldn't go to church at 10 a.m. They left our church and found a church that started at 11. That's how much comfort rules our life. Hold on. Don't think you're alone. They get to the Red Sea. And what do they say? Take us back to Egypt. They did. You brought us out here to die. What did, what did Moses say? I know what he wanted to say, and he didn't say because he was saved. He, he said, stand still. If Papa would have been there, he'd have said, and hesh it up. Not hush it up, hesh it up. And he said, see the salvation of God. Come on. You know, when they got on the other side of the Red Sea, Sarah, they said, see, look how good our God is. And that same crowd's over there going, take us back to Egypt. 
Some of you are so fearful right now because God's got that fire in front of you and you're following that fire and it's got you out of your lazy boy. It's got you out of your comfort zone and God's moving you forward and God's promoting you and God is preceding you and when you get there, the glory's going to flow. The land's going to have milk and honey. The grapes are going to be the biggest grapes you've ever seen in your life because it's an advancing fire. Thomas said unto the Lord, We know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? I love Jesus' response. Jesus just said unto him, Because Thomas, I'm the way. I'm the truth. I'm the life. And nobody comes to the Father but by me. Last fire today, and I'm done. Luke 3.16. John's not the only one that's got a great 3.16 in it. Luke 3, 16, John, speaking of John the Baptist, answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latches of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I baptize you with water. We're getting ready to baptize with water. Amen. We're getting ready here in just a moment. We're going to hold her under till she bubbles. Amen. We're going to baptize with water. But there is a baptism of fire. It is a baptism of the Spirit of God. It is a baptism of promotion. It is a baptism of purging. It is a baptism of power. Can I tell you today, you can't explain it. You say, Brother Brian, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to be baptized with that fire till I can understand it. Then you'll never be baptized with it. Why? Because you can't explain it. But I tell you, it's like the old brother said, I can't explain it, but I know when it happened to me, I can tell you what it did for me listen to me quit trying to figure out God and just receive what God has for you you say brother Brian one was an admonishing fire one was an advancing fire what's this fire this fire right here it's an awesome fire it's the empowerment of the New Testament church let me say that again it's an empowerment of the New Testament church brother Drew I'm going to do something that I don't ever do but I need you to turn Facebook Live off for a minute. They're going to have to be here live to get the rest of this.